make sure we get y'all in and out of here. So, uh, we'll go to Trey Wallace. Okay. Jeremy, I was just asking, I, I'm sorry if that audio was bad. I couldn't hear your answer. I was just asking about, uh, did you get any guys back on the defensive line in the last two weeks? And then also your preparations for South Carolina and what they do with their run game and also protecting Colin Hill. Well, um, you know, we're very familiar with, with Coach Bobo and the things that he's done in the past. Just told our players, you know, uh, we probably both sides know, know what the other team's going to do. We just don't know when the other team's going to do it, you know. So uh, we've got to be able to execute at a high level. We've got to play with some toughness up front, uh, out on the perimeter. Um, you know, so we got to control the line of scrimmage. And, you know, we, we've got some guys that have experience up front. And we've got some guys that don't. So, uh, you know, that's why you come to Tennessee is to play in games like this. And I know our guys are excited to do that. We'll go to Gustavo, followed by Brett Hubs. Coach, uh, from the past few practices, you know, have you made any choice about the backup quarterback? You know, I imagine Jared Guantanamo is going to be the starter, but you have any big decision about who's going to be the backup, who's going to be ready for Saturday? Well, we're going to continue to work uh, all our guys, and as we get closer, uh, we'll make a decision on that. Jeremy, I'm curious your reaction to Commissioner Sankey saying earlier this afternoon he had no timetable for making a ruling on anybody uh, waiting on a, a transfer waiver for immediate eligibility. And he also noted that if the rule was to be changed, that it's up to the member institutions to, to make that change. I just kind of wonder your reaction to that as you're in game week and three guys in the league are trying to find out whether they're going to be allowed to play on Saturday or not. You know, there's been a lot of questions about this. Uh, you know, I've said numerous times and that, um, you know, the, what a great job Greg has done uh, leading us through this pandemic. Uh, you know, my, I guess my question is, is uh, I don't, I, I just know about Cade. Uh, I know that he's met with um, lots of professionals. Uh, and it was submitted to the NCAA, and they felt like that he needed to play this year. So, um, you know, nobody from the SEC has contacted us to ask to meet with Cade. So, based off the decision of the NCAA, I don't know um, how they would keep him from playing unless we just want to say it's a rule that we voted on. Um, you know, when you sit in somebody's home um, recruiting them, um, you're involved with 120 kids every day. The circumstances that have went on, uh, not just in the last six or seven months, but um, my whole coaching career, you know, our first priority has got to be our student athletes. Um, and, you know, and, and, and to me, keeping them, uh, you know, going, working toward a degree and, and being the best football players that they, they possibly can be. And so, um, in my opinion, we have to we have to really uh, sit back and look and and see what we what really is the right thing to do here. We'll go to Rob Lewis, Coach. Given all the you know missed practice time and the the way camp has gone, is, is there anything that concerns you about this opener more than it would in a normal year, bust or trying to keep things simple? No, I mean, we, we, we got to play aggressive, uh, knowing that we'll make mistakes in the game. Uh, we got to play with confidence. Uh, you know, don't turn the ball over, get turnovers. Uh, all the coach speak, you know, create explosive plays. Um, you know, gang tackle, uh, score touchdowns when we get in the red area, um, keep them from doing it. So, you know, that's what win and loses games. Uh, you know, we've got 60 minutes to prove that we're the best team on Saturday. We'll go to Patrick Brown and then back to Gustavo. Hey, Jeremy, you, you talked a lot about the uh, special teams and I don't want to say maybe being behind, but not getting as much work there in the preseason as maybe you guys wanted to. Have you guys been able to get more work and do you feel more comfortable about where you guys are in the coverage units, return units, and all those things? Well, you know, the one thing we got to do was do a lot of walkthroughs during July. Um, so we, we definitely took advantage of that, but there's nothing like live reps and special teams. So just getting the guys in there and getting as many opportunities as we can uh, is what we've been focused on. Gustavo? 
Coach, of course, secondary has a lot of players returning. Do you feel that's the more experienced and even the strongest unit of your team? Well, you know, we, we do have some guys uh, that have some experience, uh, um, really in all three levels. Um, but, you know, the last year has no effect on this year. So, um, you know, how we play Saturday for those 60 minutes, that will be who we are so far this season. So we want to be at our best. We'll go to Blake Topmeyer, then Dan Harrelson. And Jeremy, uh, after last season, and I know Joe Doyle had said he uh, was going to view his transfer options. What, what was the process like for, for bringing him back on the roster? And then uh, what's that competition been like between him and Paxton, that punter? Right. You know, so um, Joe wanted an opportunity to earn a scholarship, and he, he had plenty of schools that offered him scholarships. He had a lot of places to choose from. We fully supported him wherever he was going to go. We were going to support him. Uh, that way he would, he would be eligible. Um, and some of the opportunities because of the COVID uh, conferences didn't play, so he elected to come back, and, um, and, and we were very happy to have him back. Dan? Coach, talk about Robert Muschamp. He's in his second year at Tennessee. I know you got a lot of respect for Will and the family, and he's a guy who just finished up his college career recently. But just talk about his passion for the game, just launching his coaching career within your program. Well, he, he does a really nice job for us. Uh, very hard worker, very knowledgeable. Uh, really good young coach that, uh, you know, one day will have a chance to, to probably be a coordinator or head coach. Uh, works extremely hard, and we're very excited that we have him. We'll go to Joe Rexroad and then followed by Ben McKee. Joe, you there? Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, Jeremy, another quick follow on Trey. You mentioned a little bit the health um, issues he went through. I'm just wondering, if you go back to that time, did you have a – I know you kind of talked to the family a little bit about even mentoring him if you wanted to get into coaching, things like that. I mean, I guess how um, concerned were you that maybe his playing career was done and, you know, what, how did that go for you and what did you see from him during that time period? Well, a guy that stayed positive, uh, that thought about others instead of himself. Uh, you know, a, a time when he couldn't do what he loves to do. Uh, instead of sitting around and dwelling on it, he looked uh, for a way that he could have positive impact on others. Uh, you know, so Trey is, is um, really, really been a fantastic leader around here. Uh, one of my favorite guys that I've had a chance to be around and coach over the years. All right, Ben, and then we'll close Thank with you. Price. Coach, I know you've been asked about your relationship with Mike Bobo a ton this week, but I'm curious, going into a matchup against somebody that you worked with before, how do you kind of make sure you don't chase some tendencies that that coach had at that previous stop and kind of keep in the back of your head that that coach could have evolved since then as well? Well, you just look at the whole body of work. Uh, you know, it's like this for the first games or the first two or three games every year. Um, you know, people can change. Uh, but when you've done it as well as he's done over the years, I wouldn't suspect he would change a whole lot. Uh, so, hey, my, Mike's uh, uh, one of the best coaches uh, in the country, a uh, great competitor. Uh, I love working with him. Um, and, you know, we will get after each other on Saturday and uh, probably – talk a little trash and uh, during the summertime. We'll finish with Austin. Austin, you there? Nope. Austin, you there? Last chance, Austin, can you hear us? Anybody else got a question? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, somebody said something. <laughs> this is Trey. Uh, Jeremy, you, you talked about D-Beck with earlier in the SEC teleconference. Uh, can you talk about your, your running backs right now, Ty Chandler, Eric Gray? Will we see Jabari Small and T. Hodge on Saturday? Don't want to give away any competitive advantage. 
Right, right, right. Well, like I said before, we'll, we'll play these young guys, uh, you know, this season. Um, we, we need depth at that position. Uh, our numbers have, have been down. Uh, so um, we'll kind of – if I'm not going to sit here and say somebody's going to play specifically, but uh, these guys will play throughout the year. All right. Thank you all very much. We'll get the audio fixed.